Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. At the Republican National Convention in Tampa, the media is focusing on the story of the supposed split between social conservatives and corporate Republicans. Sheldon Adelson types, Koch brothers on one side, evangelical Christians and others that have shared their beliefs on the other, and a kind of unholy alliance between these two forces. But there's another division in the Republican Party which is getting virtually no attention in the media, although it appeared with great vividness during the primaries. And that's Ron Paul libertarians on foreign policy issues that are against empire, and Ron Paul uses the word empire, want to see massive cuts in the military budget, and want to see a whole different view of America in the world. Well, that division is not being discussed at all. And the question I have is, is that asserting itself in any way at the Republican convention? And now joining us to help answer that question is Matt Welch. Matt's the editor of probably the best-known libertarian magazine, Reason Magazine, and he's currently at the RNC in Tampa. Thanks for joining us again, Matt. Thanks for having me back. Good to see you as always. So, uh, so, uh, so that's the question. Uh, this, you, you know, in the primaries, although Ron Paul was kind of out there all on his own, he used to get massive applause at the uh, at the primary audiences for his p foreign policy positions, which were very anti-militarist, anti-empire. Well, now we don't hear a word about any of that. So wh what's happening on this score at the convention? Well, before the convention, there was a kind of free convention, a Paul festival uh, um, of Ron Paul's uh, delegates who were here and also his ardent supporters. Just yesterday, I was at uh, the uh, Sun Arena, uh, University of Florida campus, and, uh, and there were probably 4,000, 5,000 people there listening to a series of speakers, including Ron Paul, including his son, Senator Randall, yeah. talk very explicitly uh, and not in favorable terms uh, about uh, their fellow Republicans. Like they showed Rush Limbaugh up on the screen and Rudolph Giuliani and everyone immediately booed and hissed and Rick Santorum, uh, they all booed. And they talked explicitly about blowback. Um, and they also talked about just the notion that uh, the reason why the terrorists attacked us uh, is that they, uh, that we are abroad in 140 countries and the usual litany that Ron Paul recites. Um, this is a complete odds with the ticket that the Republican Party is offering out there. Mitt Romney has talked about, uh, you know, rebuilding our military as if it's been gutted, spending 4% of GDP forever. Uh, and Paul Ryan has been a pretty big militarist too, and uh, both have been more eager to get the U.S. involved in places like Syria and Iran. Uh, there's not any real uh, effort to bridge that divide. Uh, the Ron Paul delegates have been kind of kicked to the curb uh, here as part of the uh, delegate process. They just want to avoid any uh, attempt at there to be a Ron Paul supporter outbreak on the floor tomorrow when they take roll call. And uh, his supporters are kind of uh, licking their wounds. And remember, there are two basic tenets to uh, Ron, two huge applause line in any Ron Paul speech. One is to end the Federal Reserve. They get a chance of end the Fed, you know, 7,000 college kids at UCLA, end the Fed. Uh, but the other one is unambiguously of let's take American soldiers back home from abroad and let's end the empire. Um, those are what attracted people to his message to begin with. And those voters don't have a natural home in the Republican Party right now. And there isn't much in the way of lip service paid uh, on the top. There are little ferments, we can talk about that further, um, in the Senate, there were a couple of people finally starting to talk about uh, maybe cutting defense one day, uh, which is uh, uh, the best that you can kind of hope for with, with this rabble. Uh, but that is a huge divide, uh, and it's a tradition that's long been on the right that has been largely ignored until Ron Paul revived of, uh, of, of uh, principled non-interventionism and a more limited, humble foreign policy apparatus. Right. Now, the... the uh I'm going to have to fix my earphone here. It's falling out of my ear, but I'll, we're going to keep going here. Uh, so when I interviewed Rand Paul in uh, New Hampshire in 2008, uh, he told me that the, uh, the, the, his sort of alliance with anti-war, anti-militarist left-wingers, he gave the example like Kucinich, was more important than the domestic issues, even though there was such a divide with the left on domestic issues. Now, we're, Rand Paul has actually endorsed Romney, and Ron Paul has not. But before we get to Ron Paul, how does Rand Paul maintain his position in the libertarian movement, ha having endorsed Romney? 
Well, uh, his Ron Paul's biggest supporters were really angry at Rand Paul for endorsing Romney, which I think, I mean, there's a, there's a, Ron Paul's followers are, are very strenuous. They're very attached to the personality of this anti-charismatic figure um, without really thinking it through. The two lived together, or did last time I checked, uh, in Washington. They bunk up together. Ron Paul's 2012 campaign, in addition to being part of his career-long message of spreading liberty and talking about Austrian economics and all of that, it's been about handing the baton off to Rand. And Rand is consciously uh, trying to grab more of a foothold within the Republican Party. And so is doing, in doing so, he has found a way to talk about these issues that seem less rigid than Ron Paul. There's just some kind of tenor change. It ultimately boils down to more or less the same set of policies. He has gone in the Senate and talked very robustly about opposing the Patriot Act, opposing uh, you know, wireless uh, 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 wiretapping and and uh, and cutting defense. You know, he's talked about the very same issues, but he has a different kind of language up for it. And so, there's no way that he endorsed Romney without his dad telling him to go for it. Um, that's kind of the point. They want to be able to get uh, Randfall in a position where he can run, no matter who wins in November between Obama and Romney. They want uh, Rand Paul to run in 2016. It's my very very strong belief. And so, part of doing that is to add various points play acceptably nice within the Republican but, but has it but in doing so Rand Paul makes deals with for example Karl Rove raised a lot of money for Rand Paul and Karl Rove is very attached to the neocon militarists I mean never mind attached he's one of the leading forces amongst them so you make a deal with Karl Rove in the elections and then you endorse Romney which is you know he's very closely part of and connected to the militarist sections of the Republican Party I mean, there's just, I mean, the truth is not that Obama's been great on these issues, but you'd think, at least at the policy level, Rand Paul probably has more in common with Obama. You cut out a little bit there, so that's why I stepped in your line. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I mean, the fundamental thing is that Mitt Romney was going to win. It's not like he uh, endorsed Ron Paul when he had a fighting chance. Once there was, once uh, the, the race was not in doubt, he fell in line. But uh, I don't think he's been actually cutting deals with people on issues of principle. Uh, at all. Uh, I have to see very little uh, evidence of that. So he's using his foothold in the Senate to pursue uh, explicitly libertarian aims a couple of times. He departs from what I consider uh, you know, great libertarian policy, but it's very rare. Uh, and he's maintained that ability to talk with people with whom he has these strong disagreements. Now, at the, at the uh, rally that took place a couple of days ago, you're saying that they had pictures of various Republicans and people were booing. Well, what about Romney and Ryan? Didn't get mentioned once. Paul talked for an hour and 17 minutes yesterday. Ron Paul did. Um, the, the name Mitt Romney was not uttered once. There were chances, of, you know, President Paul or Paul uh, uh, Paul 2016 uh, in, uh, for Rand, because Rand also spoke there. And he spoke, I should add, um, he talked about blowback and, you know, and he quoted his father's line of, well, look, we marched them in there and on a moment's notice, we can march them back out on a moment's notice. So he talked very much the same kind of stuff. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, they are not talking about Romney Ryan. They're, they are making, uh, you know, uh, Ron Paul will not, I don't think, endorse Mitt Romney uh, anytime soon. Um, uh, Gary Johnson, the Libertarian Party candidate, uh, who has, believes in um, many of the same things, he spoke at the Ron Paul convention on Saturday and, and received a very enthusiastic response. So it's not a natural bunch of Republicans. And here's the thing to remember, right? So, you know, the last four years has been a pretty lousy economy. In most scenarios right now, the team that was in charge will get punished pretty decisively at the poll. And yet it's neck and neck. And yet the Republican Party, this is crazy, they've lost registered voters over the last four years. They're given the most favorable settings you could possibly hope for in our two-party system. And they still squandered it. So these Ron Paul voters, who a lot of people like William Crystal from the Weekly Standard, love to sort of dismiss their rabble. But without them, without that 11% who voted for Ron Paul in the primary system, no Republican Party, there's no ch chance for Mitt Romney to win in November. So it's a really weird dance right now. Romney's been very personally respectful of Ron Paul, uh, even while the machinery has found ways to kind of marginalize him. Um, but the Republicans are in a tough uh, pickle right now because their broader message has not been popular, and deservedly so, I might add, and largely because 
they haven't embraced these you know, stronger, more libertarian impulses that uh, resonate through some of the better, or more interesting parts of Republican history in the state of people like Barry Goldwater, but more specifically now, young people who just feel fed up, fed up with the drug war, fed up with an overweening government, fed up with war war, too. Those people are Ron Paul people, they're not Republicans, they're in play, but Romney and Ryan are not. So is it your sense that a lot of them are going to stay home and just not vote? Or, or, or might vote Libertarian for the Libertarian Party? I think some will move. The, the affinity for Ron Paul in particular is so strong that I wouldn't be surprised if he got many, many writings uh, that won't be counted because our stupid system uh, has it that many states don't even bother counting right in. But um, a lot of people, the, the big sort of subject, subtext of the uh, Paul Festival this weekend is kind of like, what next? Where do we go? There's a lot of other, you know, smaller uh, uh, on the radar candidates uh, and politicians like Justin Amash, like a Rand Paul is probably the most uh, significant. Mike Lee, Senator Mike Lee, has some some of these kind of ideas, um, but it's mostly on really small local areas who are kind of holding the baton. But no one uh, really rallies people in the same way that uh, Ron Paul does. So it's really an open question where they go, and there's a sense of confusion among the people themselves. They don't really know where it'll go in terms of who you vote for in November. Uh, I think they have a stronger idea of what you do after November, which is they're continuing to try this sort of weird hostile minority takeover of various uh, you know, state Republican apparatuses and, and elsewhere. They're trying to get more kind of Ron Paul candidates out there. Um, it's really hard to say you know, how much momentum that will have after Ron Paul himself retires. But I would be shocked. I would be shocked. I mean, I think I believe it was in 2008 of the people who voted for Ron Paul in the primary season, then less than 40 percent ended up voting for John McCain. So if that was in 2008 uh, and we've had four more years of this stuff. Um, I don't see there being anything higher than that number of voting for uh, Romney, even though you know, a lot of libertarians are not exactly the biggest fans of Barack Obama. All right. Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.